Hello, my name is Ryan Page and I'm an application specialist for Tecla Structures. Today we'll be discussing getting started with Tecla Structures and we'll be taking a tour of the user interface. Specifically, the points we want to cover are the file menu and its key features, the top ribbons and where to find common tools, a look at the information side pane and its functions, features of the bottom selection toolbars, and lastly, how to quickly find more information or assistance on any tool or button. Now, before we get into each area of the user interface, let's cover a few overall basics. First, we want to keep in mind that this video is an overview and that it is a tour of generally where things are located. The other important thing to point out is that Tecla is not without the ability to provide more information on any tool, button, command, or component you may have. Specifically, Tecla has tooltips enabled by default, and you can hover your cursor over any command or button to access a description of it. If you need more information than what is provided in the tooltip description, you can always press the keys Ctrl and F1 at the same time to access the Tecla user assistance page on that tool. In addition, you can also press the F1 key at any time to bring up the user assistance window right from inside Tecla to browse or search the contents. If, in this video, we touch on something that you are interested in knowing more detail on, these methods will be the best avenue to get that information. With that, let's take a look at the overall layout of Tecla structures. At the very top, we have the Quick Access Toolbar. In this toolbar, we have some information as well as a few buttons that are pretty useful. To the very right, we have icons to save our model as well as the circular arrow icons that execute our undo and redo commands. Lastly, we also have the small clock icon which brings up the undo history in which you can choose a point to revert back to. In the center of the quick access toolbar, we have the file path and model name displayed as well as the name of the current view that's open. Then, lastly to the right, we have our Help icon, which brings up our TUA window and the name of the Trimble ID we are currently signed in with. Just below this area, we have a key feature called Quick Launch. Quick Launch is a search field in which you can search the user interface for commands, dialog boxes, toolbars, and other functions. This is incredibly helpful if you cannot find a command or tool. Below the Quick Access Toolbar and all the way to the left, we have the blue File Menu button. The File Menu expands to provide us with options with many common options such as opening and saving models, creating new ones, import and export functions, accessing the project properties, as well as other features such as model settings, editors, and access to help features. To the right of the File Menu, we have our Tool Ribbons. These ribbons are where all of our basic tools and functions reside. The ribbons are broken up categorically as to better organize them. We have ribbons for creating steel or concrete parts such as beams or columns or even footings. We have the edit ribbon where we can access all the ways to edit our parts and objects. We also have ribbons for controlling and creating views, creating and editing drawings or reports, managing the objects and information in our model, as well as interacting with Trimble Connect. Now, just to the right of the ribbons, we also have our window control dropdown. This dropdown has a list of all the views we currently have open, as well as options to arrange those views, such as tiling horizontally or vertically. Keep in mind you can have up to nine views open at one time. On the right side of Tecla Structures, we have our side pane. When selecting the button shown here, the side pane opens up and displays information or gives us a list of tools. For example, we can view the properties of a part or object, control and manage our reference models, and search the applications and components. At the bottom of the screen is where we can find the tools and toolbars that control how we interact with our model. We can select a base point to use with our model, which can be defined in the project properties under the file menu. To the right of that, we have a field in which we can search for objects in our model using criteria such as name or the profile or the shape of a part. Continuing to the right, we have our selection toolbar. This toolbar has a multitude of buttons that allows us to choose what we do and do not want to be able to select in a model at any given time, such as parts, 
rebar, reference models, or even the grid. These buttons can be turned on and off independently and also have tooltips associated with them. So if you're unsure what selection type does what, you can hover over it to find out more information. Next, we also have the snapping toolbar. This controls our snap switches or where our cursor snaps to on objects. And we also have the ability to set our snap depth, plane, and plane type. At the very bottom of Tecla structures, we have the status bar. When you execute a command in Tecla, at the very bottom right, you will be prompted on how to proceed and when to click points. Over on the right of the status bar, we have several indicators that provide us information. These can include single character indicators to display if certain features are turned on and off, such as O for ortho mode or S for smart select. Additionally, we have a numerical indicator for what level of an assembly or component we are working in. When just modeling normal objects for the first time, this is going to be typically set to zero. To the right of that, Tecla is displaying the function of the middle mouse wheel when it is pressed. By default, it is set to pan the model view, but this can be turned off and set to perform scrolling instead. All of these features just mentioned can be turned on and off via the file menu under the settings tab. The last two things on the status bar are the current phase and how many objects we're selecting. For phases, Tecla always operates on a default of phase one. However, if you want to use the phase manager and create more phases to categorize your different objects, you're certainly welcome to do so. And this displays which phase is currently active. Now lastly, the biggest area of all is our view. This is where we can see our current view or several views if we have more than one open. And inside each view, we'll be able to see the grid and the coordinate symbol down at the lower right showing the three axes. And with that, this concludes our tour of the overall user interface. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching. For more information on the topics discussed in this video, please see the information listed in the description. For other topics, make sure to visit our Tecla User Assistance webpage for product guides, support articles, tutorials, and more.